Hello, I'm Jeff. My wife and I host Message of Hope. Message of Hope wants to be your weekly inspirational, motivational, and non-judgmental friend to help you through your week as we share Bible truths and life experiences to let you know you're not alone. Let's join Sandra to see what Message of Hope she has today. Hey guys, I'm Sandra, and today I want to talk about the grace of God. I have found what I consider some vitally important scriptures that I believe that we should all take time to think about and use them to apply in our lives so that when we stand before our God, Jehovah is his actual name, our creator and our savior to answer for how we lived our lives, we won't be condemned to the eternal fires of hell. I'm really excited to share this with you today so that we know how to prevent just that. So let's do this. The first one I read today was from Romans 2, 1 through 11. It reads, So do you think that you can judge those other people? You are wrong. You too are guilty of sin. You judge them, but you do the same things that they do. So when you judge them, you're really condemning yourself. God judges all who do such things, and we know his judgment is right. And since you do the same things as those people you judge, surely you understand that God will punish you too. Ouch. How could you think that you would be able to escape this judgment? God has been kind to you. He has been very patient, waiting for you to change. But you think nothing of his kindness? Maybe you don't understand that God is kind to you so that you will decide to change your lives. But you are so stubborn. You refuse to change. So you are making your own punishment greater and greater. You will be punished on the day when God will show his anger. On that day, everyone will see how right God is to judge people. He will reward or punish everyone for what they have done. Some people live for God's glory, for honor, and for life that cannot be destroyed. They live for those things by always continuing to do good. God will give eternal life to them, but others are selfish, and they refuse to follow the truth. They follow evil. God will show his anger and punish them. He will give trouble and suffering to everyone who does evil, to the Jews first, and also to those who are not Jews. But he will give glory, honor, and peace to everyone who does good, to the Jews first and also to those who are not Jews. God judges everyone the same. It doesn't matter who they are. Amen. Boy, that was some powerful scriptures. Passover weekend, my husband and I watched the old Ten Commandments movie, it doesn't follow the Bible exactly, but we wanted a visual, a recounting of the Exodus. In the movie, as in the Bible, Pharaoh had hardened his heart, and his own continued stubbornness to change actually ended up causing even his own son's death. I was thinking about this as I read the scripture from Romans and how we are stubborn when it comes to changing what we're familiar with. Now, some of you may be thinking, yeah, but that was Old Testament. Well, I don't agree with that thinking. I have to ask myself, why would God have written those scriptures? Because the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. 
Do we really think that Jehovah just wanted to give us some fascinating stories of things that had happened in history? Well, no, and yes. No, because I believe the Old Testament is as important as the New One, even more so since that's where the Torah is located and gives the guidance to humankind. That's our laws to live by. And yes, because as the philosopher George Santayana wrote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. In Numbers 23, 19, we find God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? This is one of the reasons why we observe the biblical feast, because they remind us not only of the great things God has done for us, but also that we will remember the mistakes. We keep them in our minds to teach us to be on guard, to help us today to overcome the attacks from Satan, and to remember what will happen if we don't live as we were instructed to. Now, as I'm talking about the Old Testament and biblical feast, it may have you thinking about God's grace. It seems that many sermons are preached today about our God's grace, but his grace is not to the point of endless forgiveness, in my understanding. His grace is what empowers us to be able to overcome evil and our human nature to do wrong. It is not a license to do wrong while thinking all you have to do is ask for forgiveness later. Just as in the example of Pharaoh, he was given many chances, much grace, but he still chose not to change. If we look in Romans 11, 17-22, where it's talking about us being grafted into the family tree, and it had significance to me when we are thinking about judging others, and it reads, It is as if some of the branches from an olive tree have been broken off, and the branch of a wild olive tree has been joined to the first tree. If you are not a Jew, you are the same as that wild branch, and you now share the strength and life of the first tree. But don't act as if you're better than those branches that were broken off. You have no reason to be proud of yourself because you don't give life to the root. The root gives life to you. You might say, branches were broken off so that I could be joined to the tree. That is true. But those branches were broken off because they did not believe. And you continue to be part of the tree only because you believe. Don't be proud, but be afraid. If God did not let the natural branches of that tree stay, he will not let you stay if you stop believing. So you see that God is kind, but he can also be very strict. He punishes those who stop following him, but he is kind to you if you continue trusting in his kindness. If you don't continue depending on him, you will be cut off from the tree. Well, I don't know about you, but I definitely want to stay grafted into that family tree. In 1 Peter 4, 7-11, it gives us this instruction. The time is near when all things will end, so keep your minds clear and control yourselves. This will help you in your prayers. Most important of all, love each other deeply. Because love makes you willing to forgive many sins. Open your homes to each other and share your food without complaining. God has shown you his grace in many different ways. So be good servants and use whatever gift he has given you in a way that will best serve each other. If your gift is speaking, your words should be like words from God. If your gift is serving, you should serve with the strength that God gives. 
then it is God who will be praised in everything through Jesus Christ. Power and glory belong to him forever and ever. Amen. So that scripture tells us the gifts he has given us through his grace, which is to empower us to do what he asks us to do, should be used to serve others. It is not an excuse to sin and to be perpetually forgiven. In 1 Peter 5, 8-11, it warns us, Control yourselves and be careful. The devil is your enemy, and he goes around like a roaring lion looking for someone to attack and eat. Refuse to follow the devil. Stand strong in your faith. You know that your brothers and sisters all over the world are having the same sufferings that you have. Yes, you will suffer for a short time. But after that, God will make everything right. He will make you strong. He will support you and keep you from falling. He is the God who gives all grace. He chose you to share in his glory in Christ. That glory will continue forever. All power is his forever. Did you hear that? He chose you and me to share in his glory in Christ. And that glory, it will continue forever if we control ourselves and stand strong in our faith. Let's go on to read Hebrews 10, 26-39, which warns us, If we decide to continue sinning after we have learned the truth, then there is no other sacrifice that will take away sins. If we continue sinning, all that is left for us is a fearful time of waiting for the judgment and the angry fire that will destroy those who live against God. Whoever refused to obey the law of Moses was found guilty from the testimony given by two or three witnesses. Such people were not forgiven. They were killed. So think how much more punishment people deserve who show their hate for the Son of God. People who show they have no respect for the blood sacrifice that began the new agreement and once made them holy, who insult the Spirit of God's grace. We know that God said, I will punish people for the wrongs they do. I will repay them. And he also said, the Lord will judge his people. It's a terrible thing to face judgment from the living God. Remember the days when you first learned the truth? You had a hard struggle with much suffering, but you continued strong. Sometimes people said hateful things to you and mistreated you in public. And sometimes you helped others who were being treated the same way. Yes, you helped them in prison and shared in their suffering. And you were still happy when everything you owned was taken away from you. You continued to be happy because you knew that you had something much better. Something that would continue forever. So don't lose the courage that you had in the past. Your courage will be rewarded richly. You must be patient. After you have done what God wants, you will get what he promised you. He says, Very soon now, the one who is coming will come and will not be late. The person who is right with me will live by trusting in me, but I will not be pleased with the one who turns back in fear. But we are not those who turn back and are lost. No, we are the people who have faith and are saved. Amen. Now let's read Jude 1, 3 through 25, which says, Dear friends, I wanted very much to write to you about the salvation that we all share together, but I felt the need to write to you about something else. I want to encourage you to fight hard for the faith that God gave his holy people. God gave this faith once, and it is good for all time. Some people have secretly entered your group, 
These people have already been judged guilty for what they are doing. Long ago, the prophets wrote about them. They are against God. They have used the grace of our God in the wrong way to do sinful things. They refuse to follow Jesus Christ, our only Master and Lord. I want to help you remember some things that you already know. Remember that the Lord saved his people by bringing them out of the land of Egypt. But later, he destroyed all of those who did not believe. And remember the angels who lost their authority to rule? They left their proper home. So the Lord has kept them in darkness, bound with everlasting chains, to be judged on the great day. Also remember the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and the other towns around them. Like those angels, they were full of sexual sin and involved themselves in sexual relations that are wrong and they suffer the punishment of eternal fire, an example for us to see. It is the same way with these people who have entered your group. They are guided by dreams. They make themselves dirty with sin. They reject God's authority and say bad things against the glorious ones. Not even the archangel Michael did this. Michael argued with the devil about who would have the body of Moses. But Michael did not dare to condemn even the devil for his false accusations. Instead, Michael said, The Lord punish you. But these people criticize things they don't understand. They do understand some things, but they understand these things not by thinking, but by feeling, the way dumb animals understand things. And these are the things that destroy them. It will be bad for them. They have followed the way that Cain went. To make money, they have given themselves to following the wrong way that Balaam went. They have fought against God like Korah did, and like Korah, they will be destroyed. These people are like dirty spots among you. They bring shame to you in the special meals that you share together. They eat with you and have no fear. They take care of only themselves. They are like clouds without rain. The wind blows them around. They are like trees that have no fruit at harvest time and are pulled out of the ground, so they are twice dead. Like the dirty foam on the wild waves in the sea, everyone can see the shameful things they do. They are like stars that wander in the sky, a place in the blackest darkness that has been kept for them forever. Enoch, the seventh descendant of Adam, said this about these people. Look, the Lord is coming with thousands and thousands of his holy angels to judge everyone. He will punish all those who are against him and all the evil they have done in their lack of respect for him. Yes, the Lord will punish all these sinners who don't honor him. He will punish them for all the evil things they have said against him. These people always complain and find wrong in others. They always do the evil things that they want to do. They boast about themselves. The only reason they say good things about others is to get what they want. Dear friends, remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ said would happen. They told you, in the last times, there will be people who laugh at God and do only what they want to do, things that are against God. These are the people who divide you. They are not spiritual because they don't have the Spirit. But you, dear friends, use your most holy faith to build yourselves up even stronger. Pray with the help of the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves safe in God's love as you wait for the Lord Jesus Christ in his mercy to give you eternal life. Help those who have doubts. Rescue those who are living in the danger of hell's fire. There are others you should treat with mercy, but be very careful that their filthy lives don't rub off on you. God is strong and can keep you from falling. 
He can bring you before his glory without any wrong in you and give you great joy. He is the only God, the one who saves us. To him be glory, greatness, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord for all time past, now, and forever. Amen. That just told us that the stories were given to remind us that God destroyed those who did not believe and warns us not to live our lives like those people did, not to mock God, not to complain, but to stand strong in our faith, knowing if we do, we will be found without guilt before God. So we're seeing proof in Scripture that grace is not just about us. It is given when we confess our sins and live our best to not sin anymore, but it will not be given over and over again, and it is not given as a tool for us to use to feel better about something that we're about to do, knowing that we shouldn't be doing it while we're thinking God's grace will forgive me. These scriptures show that he can decide enough is enough and allow us, by our own choices, to become hardened to the point of no return. As the scripture we just read says, they used the grace of God in the wrong way to do sinful things. This also proves to me that those who say the Old Testament doesn't apply to us anymore are either not reading or understanding what they're reading, or They instead are picking and choosing which parts that they want to believe and obey by living as instructed and which parts they don't want to believe or change. Isaiah 59, 21 says, The Lord says, As for me, this is the agreement that I will make with these people. I promise my spirit that I put on you and my words that I put in your mouth will never leave you. They will be with you and your children and your children's children for now and forever. God's word never changes. Old and New Testament are to be read and the instructions given are to be followed. The word did not change because Jesus came. The word is the same forever and ever and is to be shared with others throughout all generations forever. I wanted to share this with you today so that you, like myself, can check our hearts and minds to see if there's any evil lurking there, because we could find ourselves, as Pharaoh did, with a heart that had become so hardened, as well as an ego in thinking more of himself than he should, instead of relying on God, who gave him life and every possession and immense power that had him thinking that he was above everybody else. The Exodus story was very much given to us to use for our lives today, as we see in it proof that God does offer us chances to change. But if we continue on a destructive path, following the evil desires of our hearts and minds, and abusing the grace we are so very undeserving of and so richly gifted to us by our God, that he could decide enough is enough and allow those choices, that very thinking, that way of living, to completely destroy us. So let's be careful not to take grace for granted. What exactly is grace? It is given to us to help us overcome evil and to do good things in service to others in order to help them to walk in Jehovah's ways and according to his commandments in order to receive eternal life along with us. And it is promised in the end, we will be rewarded for living a life that is pleasing to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. That is some good news. As I wrap up here today, I want to encourage you real quick to go to our website at msgofhope.com. 
And on the podcast tab, you will find episode 41, where you can re-listen to this podcast and find the references for the scriptures that we read together today, so that you can study them for yourself and make any adjustments according to what God alone lays on your specific heart. And as always, we thank you for listening to our podcast and for helping us to spread the good news of Jesus Christ by liking and sharing it with your friends. And if our podcast has helped you in any way or you need prayer, we would love to hear about that. You can contact us at msgofhope1 at gmail.com or on our website through messaging. Now, as I log off, I want to bless you with a prayer given to the sons of Aaron. Ready? Let's pray. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Until next time, Shalom. Shalom.